everyone. This is Pastor Edmund Castro again, and I'm the pastor of the Dutton Street Mission. Uh, and I've just got a few uh, words that I've written down that I'd like to share with y'all today. And I've got uh, some scriptures uh, also. And also at the end, uh, toward the end, I've got a song I'd like to share with y'all. Uh, but anyway, uh, today's subject I've titled, You Must Be Born Again. And uh, anyway, the first things that I've written down, I wrote down, have you ever replayed bad things or mistakes that you've made in your mind over and over again? Or have you ever felt ashamed of something that you've done in your past? Or are you full of regrets about something or grieving about something that you've done in your past? And, you know, I know that some people uh, feel, you know, feel that very strongly. Uh, another thing I wrote, have you ever wished that there was some way that you could start all over again? Or have you ever wished that there was some way you could be born again or wished that you could be born again? Well, if so, then I have good news for you today. You can be spiritually born again. And that's the most wonderful thing that can happen to a person in the world. Uh, anyway, in John chapter 3, verse 1 through 3, it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. In verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And you know, this is so true. Uh, you know, and I, the first part of that verse, I think it's interesting because Nicodemus you know, he was a man of the Pharisees, and he was a ruler of the Jews, and yet, you know, he came to Jesus by night because he, he was hungry. He wasn't hungry for food, but he was hungry for the words of the Lord. He was hungry for something that he had not experienced yet, and uh, he was actually hungry to be born again or hungry for the Lord's salvation. And uh, right now, uh, there are people out there who are still hungry. You know, if a person hasn't got Jesus in their hearts and lives, he's always going to have a hunger in his heart and in his life. He's never going to be completely satisfied because he has a hunger for the Word of God, and he has a hunger for to have the Lord in his life. Some people don't realize that what they really need is Jesus, but that's what they're hungering for. Remember, there's no satisfaction in life, no true satisfaction in life without having Jesus in your heart and life, without having him as your Lord and Savior, and and without being, of course, born again. Um, anyway, I also wrote this down that Jesus... And in, uh, also in John chapter 3, verse 7, farther on down, Jesus said, Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. So he said it again in verse 7. But this time he said, ye must be born again. You know, Jesus didn't say, you know, ye must go to church. Although, you know, when you become a Christian, you'll have a desire in your heart and you'll need to have fellowship. But the church, going to church will not save you. He didn't say ye must be in a religion because religion can't save your soul from sin. He didn't say you must be in a certain denomination. He didn't say you must be sprinkled or you must have perfect attendance or you must give to the poor or ye must be good. No, the Lord said ye must be born again. That's the only way that we can be saved. That's the only way we're ever going to see heaven is by being born again, by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Um, and anyway, uh, when you're born again, it, I just wrote down that it reminds me of how a newborn baby starts out. And this is how we can start out. You know, a newborn baby starts out with a with a clean slate. Everything's clean, no sins. He hasn't done any sin, but he starts out with a clean slate. 
it is clean slate. It's like he has a he has a baby has a brand new beginning. A baby has no past to haunt them anymore. And also, babies are completely dependent upon their parents, and they're humble. And a baby is also, you know, submissive and lovable. And, you know, it's the same thing with us. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, um, we are spiritually reborn. We die. We are, we die. We are right now, with, if you don't have Christ, if a person doesn't have Christ in his life, then he is like a walking dead person. He is dead in his trespasses of sin, and he is spiritually dead. But when he accepts Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells him, uh, and the, the Holy Spirit and, and that person who accepts Jesus Christ in their life as the Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit then comes inside that person and makes them spiritually alive, and therefore that, that they are born again. They are spiritually born again. Uh, again, it's just like a baby. You know, when we, when we accept Jesus Christ, we have a new beginning. The, our past sins have been forgiven. We can start off with a brand new slate. And we don't have to be haunted by our sins anymore because we know that the Lord has forgiven us for those sins. And also, like a baby, we we realize uh, that we are completely dependent upon the Lord for our salvation. We are dependent on on Him in every way, you know, to help us to live for Him and to help us fulfill that plan and that purpose that He has for our life. When we get saved and born again, we are also humble because we realize that we can't save ourselves and that without the Lord, we would not be where we are today, I mean, as saved children of God. Uh, and also, we are, are supposed to be, we need to be always submissive to the Lord and because He's the one who saved our souls. So that's the miracle of spiritual rebirth. Uh, also, um, Look in uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Uh, no, I mean 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. I'm sorry. It says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. You know, when we're born again through faith in Christ Jesus... Uh, you know, we are not born of corruptible seed, you know, like, like, you know, like our physical bodies. We know that one day our physical bodies are going to die, but we are born of an incor we are reborn incorruptible. In other words, spiritually, we are going to live forever. Our one day, our physical bodies, are, which are corruptible, are going to die, but our spirits and our souls are incorruptible. And in other words, our eternal life, we're going to have that forever. And so, you know, we're made alive by the Holy Spirit, and we're not going to lose that eternal life because we it's eternal and it's not corruptible. Um, also, I wrote, a person who is born again when the spirit is born again when the spirit of god enters his heart you know humans can reproduce human life but only the holy spirit gives us spiritual life and again that holy spirit comes and dwells us when we ask jesus into our heart to be our lord and savior now you know it kind of reminds me nicodemus in that first verse that we read kind of reminds me of a caterpillar you know, a caterpillar, before he becomes a butterfly, they say a caterpillar, all, all he does is eat. That's all he does. He continues to eat all day long. That's all he does is eat. And he eats a lot more uh, than his body weight continuously. A caterpillar will eat until he becomes a cocoon, uh, a cocoon because he's a caterpillar is always hungry. And it's just like Nicodemus was hungry for something that he didn't have. You know, we're like caterpillars before we get saved. You know, we're really, really all of us are searching for satisfaction, something that will bring fulfillment in our life. 
um, you know, we try to, you know, maybe we try to uh, get more money and we think that'll bring us satisfaction. Or we try to, um, you know, maybe get a better education. Or some people think, well, if I could only get married, if I could only have children, if I could only have a good job, if I could only become famous, uh, if I could only retire, but then they, they find out that they, are, they still, even after they have all that, they can have all those things, but they're still going to have a hunger in their life. And that hunger can never be filled without the Lord Jesus Christ in their life. Because, see, Jesus brings satisfaction that's guaranteed, you know, because he brings us, he fulfills our spiritual hunger. I tell you what, um, there's nothing more satisfied than knowing that the Lord has saved your soul, knowing that Jesus is in your heart and life, and knowing that he saved your soul, and, and that he has made our hearts right, and he has made your heart, his, our hearts right with him. You know, you know, our hearts have been made right with him through the Lord Jesus Christ, and that we are also promised eternity in heaven. So, praise the Lord. Again, we're kind of like that caterpillar, caterpillar, and then we spin into, the, in a, into a cocoon, and when we come out of that cocoon, we, you know, we have a totally new life as a butterfly. You know, the caterpillar was just surviving, trying to eat as much as he, he could to survive because he felt like he couldn't get his needs met. But when you become a butterfly, you become spiritually, you know, spiritually fulfilled. And now you're not just crawling around trying to survive, but you're flying, you know, and you're and the Lord is a part of your life and you're truly living you know, your life for the Lord. You found true life in Christ Jesus. Okay. Um, here's another one, th another scripture that I've written down. Um, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Again, let's read that once more. Therefore, if any man, you see that word, it says, if any man be in Christ. It doesn't say if any man be in a religion. It doesn't say if any man be in reading in the Bible. It doesn't say if any man uh, be uh, in a religion or in a denomination or in a certain church. But it says if any man be in Christ. It says he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And I just wrote this down, that when we accept Jesus Christ into our hearts and lives, we are not just reformed. We're not just, we're not reformed. We're not rehabilitated. We're not re-educated, but we are recreated, recreated in Christ Jesus. You see, again, our first birth gives us a physical, gives us physical life, but the new birth gives us spiritual life and membership into God's family. Um, we become a born again Christian, you know, who's now living our lives for the Lord. And anyway, um, uh, I, if y'all haven't been born again, then at the end of, at the end of, uh, we're going to sing a song first, but at the end of this song, I'd like to give y'all an opportunity to be born again. And uh, it's the most wonderful experience of your life. But anyway, I've written down, down uh, I've typed out this song. Uh, it's an old hymn that I'm sure that most of y'all who, who have been Christians for a while know this song. And it's called, Ye Must Be Born Again. And uh, I'm going to try to sing this song. I don't know if I know it that well, but just try to sing it, sing it along with me. <clears throat> it goes... A ruler once came to Jesus by night To ask him the way of salvation and light The master made answer in words true and plain Ye must be born again Ye must be born again Ye must be born again I verily, verily say unto thee Ye must be born again 
Ye children of men, attend to the word so solemnly uttered by Jesus the Lord. And let not this message to you be in vain. Ye must be born again. Ye must be born again. Ye must be born again. I verily, verily say unto thee, ye must be born again. In. Let's take one more verse of that. A dear one in heaven, thy heart yearns to see, at the beautiful gate may be watching for thee. Then list to the note of this solemn refrain, ye must be born again, ye must be born again, ye must be born again. I verily, verily say unto thee, ye must be born again. Again. Amen. Amen. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, now, again, I'd like to give you the opportunity, if you've never been born again, if you've never been made spiritually alive by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, and if you're not sure you'd go to heaven today, if you're not sure you're saved and you're not sure uh, that you're on your way to heaven, then I'd like you to repeat this prayer after me and mean it with all of your heart. Just say, Dear God, I believe that you sent your son Jesus Christ to die on a cross for all of my sins. And I believe that he rose again on the third day and that he overcame Satan, he overcame hell, and he overcame the grave. And right now, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins and save my soul. I confess you now as my Lord and Savior of the Lord and Savior of my life. And dear Lord, I ask that you would use me. I give my life completely over to you. Uh, Dear Lord, I just give you my complete, my whole being and help me, Lord, to live for you all the days of my life. And I thank you right now, Lord, for saving me, for loving me and for giving me of all my sins and for making me born again. And I ask all these things in Jesus name. Amen. So, amen. Now, if you said a simple prayer like that and you meant it with all your heart, then you just got saved. Uh, now is what, you know, what you need to do is, you know, start going to church, you know, and, you know, have fellowship with other believers. That's very important. And start praying to the Lord, you know, praying for others uh, and start praying that the Lord will show you his will, that he has the Lord's will for your life because he has a great one for your life. And also uh, start witnessing to others, telling others about how that Jesus saved you and how he can save them. And also, uh, again, you know, be baptized out of obedience to the Lord. Uh, be baptized. You know, remember that baptism is an outward sign of an inward change. It's letting the world know that you are now saved and living for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so anyway, I guess that's all I have for y'all today. And uh, I will be seeing y'all next time. God bless y'all. Bye.